the 750Ti. It won't punch you in the face with raw power, but it will caress your cheek with solid price to performance. That's called a metaphor, kids. Or is it? Simile? Yes, this is NVIDIA's latest entry into the mid-range, the GTX 750 Ti. Specifically, this is the MSI Twin Frozer OC edition, so it's factory overclocked. This card has been talked about lots, and not because it's cute. It's actually one of the first, the other one is the 750, to be built with Maxwell architecture, which is NVIDIA's successor to Kepler, and it represents the next step in power efficiency. Maxwell, according to NVIDIA, actually gets two times performance per watt than Kepler, and 30% more performance per core. And the reason NVIDIA is concentrating so much on power efficiency is because they're combining their mobile and desktop GPU architecture. The Tegra series, their mobile lineup, had their own architecture, and then the T Tegra K1 uh, debuted at CES, and that used Kepler. And now they're kind of coming out with Maxwell as, oh, this is the next mobile and desktop architecture that they're gonna be using on both, both platforms. So the deal is that Maxwell gets such great power efficiency, and no doubt we'll be seeing mobile Maxwell car, uh, chips soon, but this is a desktop card. So let's examine the specimen. Let's take a look at the back of the box So we've got a sticker right up here for hybrid BIOS Which means it supports both UEFI and legacy modes for BIOS and there's actually a physical switch on the card that you can switch for that And this is the OC edition So it comes with a gaming app that lets you uh, switch between an OC mode, which is overclocked uh, for the best performance gaming mode which gives you stable gaming performance at a higher clock and silent mode which is obviously power saving but quieter you can also enable vga boost to raise the power ceiling as well alternatively you can use afterburner their custom overclocking app which also includes predator as we can see here a screen capture and recording to tool built in so they got that in there if you don't feel like using Shadowplay or fraps or whatever you want to use they also have a blurb here talking about military class components they got some high quality stuff and their double cooler design okay let's take a look inside the box okay taking it out of the box we have a box within a box with various things inside including a ninja star disc so you can throw that at people if you want a card that talks about the uh, hybrid bios that tells you how to switch between it so that's nice and a quick start guide now under that box within a box we have a layer of foam and the card itself now this card is just under 10 inches long it's got an uh, msi's twin frozer design they have a number of different designs for their cards and uh this is the red and black twin frozer it's got a little groove in the fans there that they say helps cooling now because maxwell architecture is so efficient they don't need to have a power connector on these 750 ti's actually the asus one i know has a six pin but this one doesn't and nvidia's reference card doesn't have it either so even with these giant fans it does not need an extra power connector this one does have a heat pipe on the bottom it has them uh, coming out of the center there as you can see it takes up two pcie slots in your case and for connectors on the back we have a dvid connector a vga and hdmi port now the 750 ti platform has support for g-sync but it requires DisplayPort, which this one does not have. Uh, the only 750 Ti model I've seen so far that has it is the EVGA uh, model, but uh, NVIDIA does include support for G-Sync, but the model itself, the card, has to have the port on it for that to work, obviously. Now, in terms of specs, the 750 Ti actually appears low-powered compared to its predecessors, the 650 Ti and the Ti Boost. It has less transistors, less cores, and less memory bandwidth, but it's because of Maxwell's power efficiency, the architecture. Its TDP, its power consumption, is 60 watts, around half the power requirement for those other two cards, its predecessors. Now, despite those lower specs, performance is still impressive. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to run benchmarks on this particular card, but in benchmarks seen around the web, the 750 Ti is very competitive for its price point, running the latest games at playable frame rates at 1080p. Hardware Canuck shows us the reference card lands in between the 650 Ti and the Ti Boost, but keep in mind, that's with a small stock cooler with no overclocking on the reference card. Linus showed in his video that the cooler Asus puts on its version helps quite a bit, and MSI claims that this card runs cooler and quieter than the reference card overclocked and under full load. So you might be asking yourself, what is the point 
of this card. It's not a Titan. Definitely not a Titan. What's the point? Well, for the consumer, this is a fairly inexpensive card. It runs the latest games at comfortable frame rates at 1080p. It doesn't require a power connector. You can just throw into an old system without worrying about power limitations. I mean, it says ma uh, minimum 400 watts, but if you got less than 400 watts, I mean, what are you doing? Now, for the industry at large, the 750 Ti is a showcase, a launch of the Maxwell architecture, the new one. So you can imagine with this power efficiency, two times as much as, as Kepler per uh, performance per watt, how awesome the higher GPUs are gonna be when they come out. Now, MSRP for the 750 Ti is 150 bucks. That's the reference card. This card itself will run you 200 bucks. It's one of the more expensive models, but it is the OC edition. So you know you're getting that souped up performance with that twin frozer cooler. And of course, it's available now at NCIX. Guys, thanks for watching this unboxing of the MSI GeForce GTX 750 Ti Twin Frozer OC Edition. Oh, that's a long name. Like the video if you feel like it, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.